Okay, well good morning to you all. It is uh, Tuesday, August 17th, and I'm headed out for a work commute on the 500X again. I was trying to record a vlog yesterday on the Rebel. It's the first time I'd ridden the Rebel in several weeks, well, really since I returned from my uh, Cannonball Run trip, but <laughs> I was having GoPro battery issues yesterday morning. Thought it was charged, wasn't charged. Tried another battery, thought it was charged, wasn't charged. <laughs> I gave up. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop and get fuel in this thing, and uh, eh, I can make it to breakfast. i got enough in there. Ah, boy. So, weather has been a little crazy here in Houston for the last week and a half, almost two weeks since I returned. Uh, we've been getting a lot of storms and rain, and... Uh, my particular area out here in Katy hasn't been horrible. Uh, we've been getting a lot of rain, but not as much as the rest of Houston. But every day it's you know gloomy and threatening to rain, so it's kind of putting my uh, motorcycle projects on hold a little bit. Uh, I've got the new Kaufman's Thunder exhaust for the Rebel 1100 waiting for me. Uh, they were so kind to send that out to me. Uh, a week and a half ago, uh, and uh, it arrived, let me say, uh, right at a week ago, something like that. It took about a week to get to me, uh, but it's been sitting in a box in my living area for the last uh, week, staring at me, reminding me, uh, hey, you need to do this. Uh, the Thunder exhaust is a longer, uh, more upswept uh, exhaust, kind of a traditional look. And it uh, looks similar to the Vance and Hines and the Two Brothers uh, exhaust for the Rebel, but it's a little bit shorter. So I think it might work okay with uh, saddlebags. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I'm going to do that uh, comparison video and install. Uh, the improvements in the new version beyond the, the length uh, is how it mounts. Uh, it ties into the factory exhaust hanger uh, where the OEM unit uh, connected or uh, mounted. And uh, they also included a uh, black clamp now, the exhaust clamp down at the base. Uh, and it does not require a rivet from what they tell me, so that's nice. Uh, of course, the shorty needed a rivet because it didn't have anywhere else to tie onto that. So, uh, the exhaust pipe or mid-pipe, whatever you want to call it, was where it attached, and that's it. So that rivet was a safety measure to keep it from loosening up and flying off when you're done going down the highway. So anyway, uh, the new one where it ties into that factory hanger uh, locates it fast so it can't uh, back off and fly away. So no rivet. That's cool. And the uh, the black stainless exhaust clamp is also a nice touch. So uh, it kind of blends with the blacked out look of the bike a little bit better. So I'll put that on there hopefully this week if I have time. Uh, I've been scrambling to catch up with all my missed work and uh, everything that piled up during my month-long absence in July. And now it's just playing catch-up. On the topic of uh, you know reviewing that exhaust and all that, it reminds me I watched uh, Riding on Two Wheels uh, channel this morning. He had a video talking about you know our YouTubers becoming shills for products, uh, and I totally agree with him. Uh, I, I've kind of made a point to mention that in my videos through the past couple of years that any of the products that I review on the channel uh, are because I bought them. <laughs> the, there's a, a difference between a paid product placement and advertisement and uh, you know purchasing it yourself and kind of showing what works what doesn't work it's just uh, it's a little more honest way to do things I think and uh, I wouldn't put something up on the channel that I don't like or believe in myself uh, and particularly something that I haven't used myself uh, in day-to-day -day riding and living with a machine so the uh, Kaufman's in particular, uh, I, 
I'm an unabashed uh, fanboy of uh, Kaufman's. I, I like the product. They're made in the USA. They're extremely well constructed, uh, stainless steel, ceramic coated. Uh, they're just tough as nails. They're, they're really good products, and uh, I like the sound. So <laughs> win-win all the way around. So when they reached out to me after my Rebel. Uh, 1100 video where I put the the wrong uh, exhaust on there. Make sure to state you know, this very clearly. This is not made for the Rebel 1100. Uh, they wanted to find a fit, you know. So working with them has been great. Uh, they're a really, really good group of people and very eager to meet the need uh, of owners and upgraders and motorcyclists. It's really cool. So the prototype that I installed, uh, which is now their production shorty exhaust for the Rebel, uh, they sent that to me free uh, as a review item, you know, just kind of prototype it and see if it fits. Uh, and we did, you know, pictures and Zoom calls trying to figure out the angle and all that, so they uh, pushed that to production. And uh, then, of course, this new Thunder that they sent me is also uh, a freebie that they sent because they would like me to try it out and give my opinions on whether it works with bags, uh, you know, any difference in sound, look, etc. So I'll do my typical uh, comparison with the Zoom audio recorder. And I'm going to run this light. <laughs> no, I'm going to run. I'm going to look and I'm going to cautiously get the hell out of the way. Um, the uh, zoom audio recorder will be set up I'll put my DB meter out you know same way that I did that last video and uh, try to give an A to B comparison between the two exhausts as far as sound levels and timber of the exhaust so to speak uh, and I'll do I'll try to set up a camera tripod where uh, the camera is fixed the bike is fixed nothing moves and I'll have a A to B picture of what the exhaust looked like on the bike uh, they've already got pictures on their website, you know, they're probably light years better than my amateur photo skills, but you know, I'll, I'll do it just for completeness sake. And my tin is packed this morning. Somebody let me in. Oh, that guy's nice. He scooted over. He saw it coming. It's Houston, you can't wait for an engraved invitation, you're not going to get it. You're going to make a spot, and anytime you put on your signal, everybody is going to nail the gas to block the impulse. Not bike friendly territory. No, not, not any friendly territory, but definitely not for bikes. Just watch my mirrors like a hawk. Oh, speaking of mirrors, <laughs> I, I try not to be too much of a uh, let me, let me, what's the nicest way to say it? I try not to point out stupid comments on YouTube very often uh, or let people bathe in their stupidity, but there was one guy that's uh, posted a comment about the uh, rider scan mirror here saying, I've never seen a mirror that the sole purpose is just to show your own face or whatever. So it's, it's so stupid I can't even commit it to memory because the purpose so that. He thought that that mirror was just so I could look at myself in the screen. Uh, okay. Yeah, if you'd like a fun house view. Genius. It's a peripheral view. It gives you 180 degrees. Look at this. I'm all the way, I don't know if you can see my hand in the, in the screen. My hand is up here, even with the screen. So that's 90 degrees. You can see my fingers wiggle. It's a 180 degree parabolic view compound curve no less it gives uh, you know compound height uh, as well as side to side width so it's a fabulous aid in this kind of traffic because uh, Houston drivers are so fast and aggressive they will sneak up on you in your flank in literally one second you can do a head check think that it's clear hit your signal you start to change you look back and there's already a car closing in on you at 90 miles an hour 30 or 40 mile an hour overtake. So it only takes one second for people to cover that kind of ground with those overtake speeds and 
as I'm changing lanes, I'm always watching this thing to see if somebody's sneaking up in my corner just as I've uh, you know, turned my head back to look at the road ahead. It's crazy. And I've got the old man uh, blind spot mirrors on the corners of the uh, uh, mirrors as well, just to give me a little bit more periphery as I'm looking in this direction. They might be old man, but they've saved my bacon, I'll tell you that. Nearly two million miles. Hell, I'm probably at two million miles now. I haven't bothered trying to total it in a few years. I've ridden uh, right around two million miles in two points. I did a million point two in just a seven year span. I've been riding for 37 years, so uh, two million miles is a pretty uh, conservative estimate, actually. And I've never been down. I've never been down on the street. I've been down more times than I can count. Track, dirt, really else. That's the point. You get out there and push the limits. But on the streets, and motorcycling is a no-contact sport. Make sure you're aware of your surroundings and play it like a chess game. Always give yourself multiple outs. And assume that you're invisible. Even if they can see you, generally they don't care. They're not really... Uh, identifying the motorcycle as a threat so they don't have any respect for it and they just mow right over you or change lanes, stop in front of you, pull out in front of you, whatever it is. Uh, call it human nature, call it arrogance, whatever it is. Uh, if it's not something big and imposing, it doesn't pose an immediate threat uh, to the subconscious, so you just ignore it, you tune it out. Or in some cases, you know, a lot of Houston drivers are just douchebags and they do it anyway. I figure, eh, let them hit me, I'm in the car. Yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but uh, motorcycles don't have airbags or crush stones. <clears throat> it's surprising how uh, cagers have really adopted that mentality over the last decade or so is that yeah let them hit me uh, kind of a posture where they just don't care uh, they pull right out in front and they just assume to make the other person slow down and make way for them instead of yielding to the right away and paying attention to the road for the road you know? okay. man that sun is bright this morning it looks like a really nice day today but i think we're going to have more storms set up in that afternoon heating effect where uh, you know, from about noon on we've got a 50 to 70 percent chance of thunderstorms every day for the next five six days it's been that way for the last several already living in the gulf coast man lots of humidity lots of uh, sun churns up the atmosphere Okay, well I have arrived, and uh, time to go eat. Just put my stuff away. Don't know what today is going to hold. Hopefully something productive and money earning. <laughs> I spent most of the day yesterday at the warehouse just rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic uh, to try to uh, make the space a little more usable, get rid of a bunch of my junk that needs to be... Uh, Discarded, sold, recycled, whatever. So, anyway, today, hopefully, I'll make some money, money. All right, everybody. Welcome back to my day in progress. It's uh, mid-afternoon Tuesday, about 2.30-ish. Uh, I'm knocking off early. 
to uh, get home before the weather sets in again. It's going to get a little ugly, I'm sure. It has been every afternoon. We had a few showers roll through earlier and apparently hit the Katy area pretty hard, but not, uh, not here where I am right now. So I'm going to get home before traffic and everything goes sideways. And uh, if it's not raining at home, uh, I'm planning to uh, do the uh, Kaufman's uh, Thunder install on this thing, or at least take some preliminary pictures, uh, stage it up and all that. I don't know if I'll have time to do the uh, audio recordings and all that stuff, but we'll see how it goes. Got these convertible Ferraris out here with the lids open on them. About to get wet. Ooh, that's a big hole. I'm still looking for new shocks uh, for the rear of this thing. I know a lot of people are pretty incensed about that issue, <laughs> even the ones that aren't owners, which is kind of funny. We have a lot of people bad mouthing the Rebel and, oh man, you gotta change the shocks. It's terrible. It's a deal breaker, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, well, when you got skin in the game, it's a different story, but anyway, <laughs> I digress. Uh, I love the bike. I think this thing's fantastic. I just need a little bit higher handlebars, uh, or not higher, further back, about one more inch reach, so I can sit up instead of being hunched forward all the time, because i got short arms. And uh, the rear suspension is uh, arguably a letdown on this bike. Uh, I have adjusted my rear suspension to where it rides a lot better than it did, uh, as it was delivered from the factory, with the position number three. Uh, I'm riding right now at number seven, on the preload in the rear and it helps a lot but these shocks are just under damped uh, so I am looking around to see who's gonna come up with uh, good aftermarket shocks for it uh, whether it's Burley brand or uh, I'm really hoping for Olin's uh, those STX or whatever they are look pretty tasty and they'll match the blacked out look of the bike too uh, but I am looking for something that's fully adjustable for uh, spring preload, compression, and rebound. So I'm really hoping for some uh, two-stage uh, adjustable compression uh, for the rear shocks, uh, where you've got the uh, high-speed compression, low-speed compression. But uh, as long as they're compression and rebound adjustable, that should help quite a lot, I would think. fuel in this thing. What is with all these a-holes? Always double lefting at that light. It's not a double left turn. Drive. One of the other add-ons that I would like to put on this, uh, I'll probably 
give that some serious consideration around the October time frame is the uh, foot peg uh, relocation or extenders from uh, T-Rex Racing. They've got them listed on their website as out of stock and uh, I read through some of the comments and discussions uh, and the guys at T-Rex seem to indicate that a lot of their manufacturing stock is coming in uh, in the October, mid-October time frame. So uh, I might grab a set of those and see if it uh, gives a little different angle for the feet. Uh, I don't mind the mid controls, but they're a little high, kind of cramped, uh, even for my short legs. So uh, having the ability to stretch out a tiny bit might be nice. The other thing is they've got some uh, adjustable floorboards, mini floorboards, uh, that'll work with either the factory pegs or the, uh, the extended pegs that they're going to offer. That might be interesting. As long as they don't compromise the uh, cornering clearance, you know, the lean angle too much, that might work. And even if they do reach out a little too far, uh, as long as they're pivoting, if they still flip up, that way, you know, if you do lean it over and manage to drag part of it, it just kind of folds out of the way. That would be good. Beyond that, uh, I think just the uh, you know slightly more substantial windscreen up here. It's uh, about all I need for touring on this thing. Just a little bit more wind protection. I've got the bags now. Good to go. a new uh, moto rad mount on my helmet because the uh, 3M tape that was holding it on there is kind of degrading and it was drooping and falling off. Uh, I didn't know that it was going to make it through my entire uh, cannonball run trip. It was pretty bad. So I replaced that uh, just a few days ago or whatever and the uh, angle on my camera is off now so I'm trying to relearn that. <laughs> position in the camera so it's not pointing at the sky or pointing down at the tank. It's kind of hard to find a middle ground of these until you uh, review the footage and then you see it and go, oh yeah, I guess I need to change that. Huh? Yeah, just need a little more wind protection on this thing. 70 miles an hour on the highway, you're really struggling to hang on sometimes, especially when you're headed into the wind. It's a, it's a little taxing the tire. Otherwise, the motor has got just gobs and gobs of torque. It'll make a great touring motor. Just need the creature comforts of uh, slightly better wind protection and ideally uh, new rear shocks uh, to smooth out the tail of the bike. I think I can find a happy medium with the factory shocks enough to put a few thousand miles of touring and not to be too worn out. I do long touring days, you know, 500 mile days are no big deal for me, so I don't know how 500 miles in this saddle is going to feel the rear shocks being the way they are. It's about time to find out. Yeah, just as a point of comparison, you know, my, my commute in this morning on the CB500X, I was running 80 plus almost the entire route didn't feel any upper body fatigue or anything like that. And here, just going 70, there's a fair amount of fatigue and hanging on the bars and you know, trying to dial in your lean into the wind just because there's no forward wind protection at all. My 500X with the factory fairing on there plus that windscreen that I added, you know, the Mazda, zero body stress or anything to uh, ride it. And, legal or uh, slightly higher than legal road speeds. As much as I'm not a fan of the Batwing style fairings, I think that one that uh, was advertised on uh, Japan We Bike, I can't remember if it's Daytona or Asahi, but that uh, smoke plexi uh, low Batwing, I think that might be a good fit for this bike. I just don't like that square cutout around the headlight. price on it was pretty reasonable. 
think it was in the $300 range with everything, including the mounting bracket. So that, that compares pretty favorably with the Honda OEM unit. I might pull the trigger on that. Get it and review it. If I don't like it, I'll sell it off. Give it away on the channels. And... I just really like the naked look at the front end. I wish I could find something that uh, was just slightly wider than this and slightly taller, but not the full back wing. Uh, I did buy a GV Airflow Universal to try out on this. I just haven't gotten to it. And I'm not really pleased about the whole idea of clamping something with the fork tubes. So, I don't know. I might see if I can have some custom mounts made for it to, to tie into the, the mirror posts and something else in the lower uh, headlight frame or something like that to avoid clamping the fork. So, but those GV Airflows are great. You can adjust the... Uh, airfoil portion of the top of it up and down. If I could find that in a smoke color, you know, similar to this, so it would blend in with the front of the bike, it would be good. If I want to do something, i got to do it early in the morning before the uh, heating effect. I was exchanging notes on YouTube uh, about some people complaining about the, you know, the DCT versus the standard on this. And they're like, why would you ever choose the DCT over a standard? For blasting around in traffic like this... The DCT is just a no-brainer, in my opinion. Uh, I've got plenty of standard shift motorcycles, you know, been riding them all my life, and uh, all displacements from small to large, you know, cruiser to standard to hypersport to whatever you can think of. And I gotta tell you, the, the DCT on this thing is really, really good. Uh, it has a few quirks that annoy me, but they're not showstoppers, and uh, once you kind of know those quirks are there you can work around them and it just becomes second nature just like riding any other bike uh, the uh, occasional uh, downshift in a corner you know it's one of the first things that I noticed and complained about uh, it's really a non-issue for me and like right now it's trying to hold the gears longer than I want to in sport mode so you just hit the uh, paddle shift and shift it with your finger it's really really good and never having to downshift never having to hunt for a gear or you know worry about stalling the motor or the light or any of that it's just it's amazing and my educated guess on this is that uh, the clutch is probably going to far outlast uh, a standard because the computer is always managing the clutch slip and you know you don't have any ham fisting of uh, you know riding the clutch too long and burning up your plates or scorching things or anything like that so uh, I'm, I'm betting that the uh, DCT clutch is going to outlast the manual version clutch uh, by quite a good margin now with my comments that I made back to that uh, one gentleman about the DCT uh, saying, you know, wouldn't a manual be better? If the Rebel were a more sporty bike, uh, you know, lower uh, weight, uh, better handling, all that, not a cruiser, essentially, <laughs> then yes, I think I would probably prefer this motor in a standard. But, uh, that's a, you know, it's a total change in the riding philosophy and the feel of the bike, you know. Uh, more of a standard or a sport bike versus the uh, uh, cruiser type platform like this. So in a cruiser, I think the DCT is fantastic. Uh, if Honda were to drop this engine into one of the Neo Cafe bikes, something like the uh, the CB 
650R uh, platform or maybe the uh, uh, you know CB1000 type platform. Something with really good suspension. Hopefully a uh, you know very lightweight trellis frame, something like that, with fully adjustable upside down forks, adjustable rear mono shock, you name it. Uh, I think this uh, engine could be a hell of a lot of fun to play with because it's super torquey and uh, they could leave it in the original Africa Twin uh, performance trim with even volumetric efficiencies on the cylinders instead of a staggered uh, arrangement like this one has uh, and the slightly lighter flywheel uh, and the higher horsepower, you know, top end, 116, whatever it is, horsepower. Uh, it would just be a hoot because it's very compact without the DCT on it. Uh, and I think it would just be a fantastic little uh, Canyon Carver back road bruiser. And in that case, yes, I would want a standard that way. I could engage the uh, clutch, you know, to my liking uh, and put a slipper clutch in the thing, hopefully, so you can bang the downshifts and uh, not hop the rear end around. Stop off and get some fuel in this thing before I head home. In the uh, comments that I was leaving on uh, Honda Pro Kevin's channel uh, to another uh, DCT owner, he has the new uh, NC750 X DCT, and he was saying that the DCT was just horrible. Uh, he was having a hard time riding it, uh, wrist strain, body strain, just you know, making him generally miserable. And he only had a few hundred miles on the bike. Uh, and I replied back to him asking, you know, hey, have you tried playing with the ride modes uh, and you know maybe change your DCT or throttle sensitivity or whatever? And uh, apparently he had tried that uh, after he posted his comment said that it made a good difference but what really made a difference for him and I think it's going to make a big difference for me is he added bar risers uh, so he wasn't reaching out so far and putting weight on the, the throttle side because ride by wire uh, is pretty sensitive it's twitchy based on your throttle map or whatever's uh, programmed in the computer so uh, he said just getting some weight off of his wrists made a big change and then switching over to a different ride mode seemed to help quite a bit and it's not annoying him as bad now so that's good. I think when I can get my hands you know more upright and off of the bars I'm gonna have a better experience on this bike too because I have noticed that uh, over rough roads uh, here in town hitting potholes and all the stuff if I uh, have it in sport mode it will uh, get a little hitchy on the throttle it's a little grabby you know it's hard to maintain the speed and the throttle setting because even just a tiny bit of input makes a big difference car wash no thanks i think i'm going to try running uh, mid-grade in it i haven't done that yet i've always put super in this thing so i'm going to run a few tanks of uh, 89 in there and see if it makes any performance difference or feel or whatever economy difference I don't think it's gonna make much difference on this bike uh, it's man I'm glad I tipped that uh, didn't even open the nozzle yet it's pouring fuel out uh, I don't remember what the compression on this motor is I think it's 10.3 to 1 so it's not a really high compression motor uh, it probably isn't going to make any real difference on performance whether you're running mid-grade or high-grade. Uh, here our fuel ratings are not octane, it's uh, RM slash 2, whatever. Uh, it's the AKI index, which is the anti-knock index. Uh, so R89 is not actually 89 octane, that's like 91 or 93 or something, and R93 three octane is actually equivalent to like 96, 97 octane, so whatever. Um, the manual for these bikes only calls for uh, 87, I believe. So, probably not going to make a lot of difference on uh, performance, but you never know. If I had access to a dyno, I would uh, try that out and see if it really does. I must be pouring really slow today because it is taking forever to get to the top. Okay, let's round it off. Oh, look at that. 8.50.
Oh, I went over. Stupid. Okay then. 8.50 to attack. Yes, receipt. Okay then. A little extra paper. Do my normal mileage recording routine. I still haven't figured out the modes on this thing to get it exactly where I want it when I get it there. <laughs> Range is 27 miles. I hope not. Get home before the rain really cuts loose, because it's getting thick out here. Man, it is super humid. Sweating. I didn't ride for uh, almost two weeks when I came back from my uh, cannonball trip. Needed a butt break. <laughs> and uh, the main reason I wasn't riding is I pulled my helmet apart, my Schuberth C3 Pro, and uh, washed all of it and you know, cleaned it out and just didn't put it back together. I couldn't stand wearing it anymore because it smelled like a dirty shoe. You spend a couple months in a helmet without washing it, and boy, it gets a little funky. Okay, off we go. the uh, the clean helmet because it's not clean now god I'm sweating like crazy in this thing dripping 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 DCT thing. I have not uh, ever run this thing in uh, manual mode. I've tried it once, but I've never really done it beyond uh, just a, a quick trial. You know, maybe I need to run it around in manual mode and play with it. I, I override the shift preferences all the time, the paddle shifters, but uh, that is just a temporary thing and it, it goes back to full automatic mode after a few seconds of steady throttle. Or steady load, I should say. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Might put it in manual mode and play with it that way for a few days, see how it feels. What you doing there, buddy? Pick a lane. home again. I would love to go out for a ride today, but it's really hot, really humid. I know it's going to rain, so I'll put it in the garage and keep it dry. Catch y'all later.